Okay, so this is an informational video on uh, Craftsman radial arm saws that had to be retrofit with new parts per a federal court order. You know, um, these saws, the older saws like this, they didn't have a, a guard down here. So there was uh, issues with people getting cut by these things uh, because there wasn't enough protection here. And there were other issues with the saw as well. And you'll see that as we go along further in the video. So what they did, uh, this table is loose. I've already got the table loose because I'm going to show how to take it off and everything. But anyway, what they did was they ordered certain specific parts to be replaced on certain specific models. You'll need to look at your serial number on your saw to see if you qualify to get a retrofit kit. So basically on this saw what we're going to replace is the the blade guard this handle okay and a couple of other pieces and the table is part of it but I've already replaced the table because um, what was happening with the table was it didn't come it didn't allow for the blade guard to work properly so uh, I, I'm already replaced this table previously because this is a this is a t you know I, I've done some work with this saw. The parts that are included in the kit are a new blade guard that has both front and back guards. You can see these guards here, front and back. Okay, this is this front piece has an anti kick pawl on it. Okay, to prevent the wood from kicking, it's got a guard that lifts up and goes down. Okay, it's got a replacement. You know where you put your vacuum set up here. Okay, they give you a little replacement hose thing too. They give you the handle, okay, this stuff was all in bag, they kind of took it out, but they give you the handle, they give you a, a set of standard instructions and then the set of instructions just for uh, th this part here, which uh, this actually comes in this bag, this is the pawl here. Uh, once you put this guard on, you're not going to be able to take it off without taking this piece off also. But, uh, you know, I don't really see any reason that you would take the guard off. And then they, gi they give you a ring that goes on the back of that to keep that from moving. The, you know how they want to move on there. If you've used these saws enough, you know how they, those things want to move. So this ring basically locks the uh, locks that in, into place and keeps it from moving. Okay. And then along with the table, they give you new clamps so that you can, uh, you know, these little clamps right here they give you replacement ones of these so and then they're going they give you rails that uh, are designed to accommodate these clamps because these clamps have a different design on the bottom of them instead of just screwing through like those ones do they actually have a square uh, fitment on the bottom to fit into the to give a positive lock on the uh, the rail there okay so let's go ahead and get started here. This retrofit probably take you, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Uh, it's going to take me a little bit longer because I'm explaining everything, but um, so basically the first thing, you know, that I would do on this thing is, is uh, and that's just me, like I said, you got to read the instructions because there are certain things that are going to be explained here that I'm going to show, but there's other things that are worded in the instructions very specifically, so you'll want to make sure to read those instructions, but Again, I'm doing this video just kind of because when I read the instructions, it seemed like they weren't very straightforward. So just kind of show you a guy who's doing this um, himself, you know. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take this blade off just so I don't have to deal with the blade. Then I'm going to remove the table and remove uh, this blade guard. Okay, and then after I get the blade guard put on, I'm going to replace this. Okay, so well, actually I'm going to replace this first and then I'm going to put the blade back on with the blade guard. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So, the best position for this thing to be in, uh, well, first of all, it's unplugged, so it's, you know, I don't have to worry about turning it on accidentally, which is kind of hard to do anyway, because it's got a safety key, but, you know, just, I unplugged it anyway. Um, basic tools for the job, you know, little 3A socket, couple of, a um, couple of hex keys here, you know, this one here is a quarter inch and uh, 3 sixteenths. A couple of screwdrivers, a straight blade, and a Phillips head. You know, a couple of uh, couple of wrenches. You know, I just use adjustable wrenches. You can use fixed if you want. And the reason I use the wrenches is to get the blade off. And I've already taken the screws off the table, so you know we're not going to be going through that step. I mean, if I have to explain how to take screws off of a table, uh, you probably don't have any business having one of these saws. 
Anyhow, so I've already removed all the hardware, so I'm just going to set this hardware aside. There were five uh, pieces of hardware that secured this table to the, uh, the surface there, okay? All right, so first things first, and as I said, the table's already loose. I just go ahead and move the saw forward. Since I'm going to be working in the forward area of the saw, and I just want to make sure we're still framed. Yeah, we're good, okay. So, got the saw forward here. Um, what I would do is, you know, just go ahead and take this guy off, and this is locked onto here, so unlock it. It's just going to lift free of here. I use uh, a little persuader for safety so I can keep my fingers away from this blade. It's going to put it right in there. In the back part. Remember that's a left-handed thread on the blade. You probably already know that because you've been using this saw. But just in case you don't use it every day. Okay, so. And again, the saw is unplugged, so I don't have to worry about any surprises. I'm just going to take the saw off and put it out of the way here. Or the blade, I should say. Okay, now, the, uh, the piece that they give me goes back in here to hold the blade guard from, to keep it from shifting. So that's the critical part here. So that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to end up putting on here. Okay, so basically goes like this. Now there is a little screw under here, underneath this part right here. I probably should show it to you. Uh, this is the screw. They give you a little hex key. It's a, it's a hex key in there, and it actually screws up into here. Um, this was actually made like this from the factory, so they did have a screw up in there, but it was removed. Uh, when you unpacked the saw originally if you were the original owner, so uh, Let me see here if I can show that that is the uh, That's the hole underneath where where this little piece is going to fit Right in there, okay, and I'm gonna put a, a hex in there So let me just go ahead and do that now so that it's already in place and that just gives it a positive lock you know um, so that this doesn't move around and that and so that everything is registered basically okay so let me just go ahead and take this piece off was it this one here yeah it was that one okay well, let me just get it started by hand Upside down and backwards, so that's always fun. Okay. Make sure to do it by hand so that you don't cross thread that thing. I've already I've already screwed it in a couple of threads, so I know that it's not cross threaded. Okay. You don't have to do it real tight. In fact they say not to do it super tight. Just get it nice and snug. Okay, so I'm going to take this off here. I won't be needing that anymore, but I will need this extension in a second. Um, these guys here. Okay, so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the table off now that I have the saw blade off. So I've already removed all the hardware and everything. I'm going to take all these tools over here. I'm going to set them aside. off. It just gives me a nice clearance to work with when you have the blade out of there. This guy here. Okay. 
Now normally what I would be doing is I would be replacing these two rails. These are the rails that the table goes on to. Uh, it's a little bit of a timely procedure and since I'm not going to be doing that myself uh, for this project, uh, you know, I'm just basically going to show you the rails. So, they give you two rails like this, you know, you're going to put them on here. The difference is, is this has a square and that has a hole. That's the difference. So you can see the square here. And the reason is, is because these fit into, let me see if I've got that here on video, these fit into the square somehow, I'm a little bit clumsy on camera here, but you can get the idea, they fit into the square and the next step that you would do is you know, take these off, put these on, you'd have to get these rails to where they're parallel with this surface right here so there's a whole procedure that's outlined in the manual on how to do that. And the reason that you want to get these parallel with this is because this assembly is made to be parallel with the arm itself so that the saw is not going to raise and lower as it's sweeping across the wood. So that's a, that's a pretty critical step. You're going to want to read the instructions thoroughly on that. And you're going to really want to read the instructions from start to finish anyway. As I said, I'm just doing this as a, you know, FYI basically. Okay. So these are the parts here. back of the box. Okay, so now I've got this piece on. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put the new guard on. Now before I do that, I'm going to show you, because it's going to be hard, it's going to be too hard to show how it's done when it's up there because of the room. It's kind of a tight fit. show you this piece is the jawbone kind of, of this okay and it, it's held in with these two pieces of hardware so what happens is this lifted up in here this piece there's a little tab on here is going to go through this hole right here okay they show this on the instructions or they mention it on the instructions but they don't really show it so it is kind of confusing and this piece right here is going to go through here and lock onto there so that when the arm raises and lowers this also raises and lowers okay now this has to be centered um, part of the problem of the way they did this was that when you get it up in here and it's on over the blade because it kind of has to be over the, well I guess it doesn't have to be over the blade no you can do it without the blade okay um, you have to push this to make sure that this piece right here is centered in that hole as you're twisting the screw in there. And it's got to be over this arbor while you're doing that. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, actually, no. I guess I can do that that way. Okay, yeah, I can actually install it with the blade off. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me go ahead and do this. I'll show that for you. Now, part of what hides it is this shield right here, so you got to push this shield out of the way. And then you're going to want to feed the screw in there, making sure that that little tab is pushed up into that hole, because otherwise it's not going to be registered properly. So, what's happened is I've inserted this screw, which actually screws into this piece. This piece goes through here, okay? And then that's going to go over the arbor. Well, I don't know if you call that an arbor. I think it's, it's a shaft. I think the other side is called an arbor. Anyway. Okay. 
And then this guy is going to go Yeah, there's this little piece right here. This piece here gets in the way, so you have to kind of push this out of the way. And then slide this so that this part goes over this lip. Okay? So, let me do this here. Just trying to get it to lock positively. Anyway, it always goes good when you're off camera. I'm sorry. This shoulder inside here is actually what fits over this here into the groove, okay? But this has this still has to be out of the way. So I'm gonna get that there. And the reason is is because it then pushes it against the piece that I just put on. But see, no, it cannot shift forwards or backwards. Okay? So then to screw it on. This is going to be the locking mechanism that locks that on positively onto that collar. Okay, so that's locked on. Um, and then the next step here is the handle. Okay, the handle. Um, the instructions say that you're only going to take off one screw, but there's actually two screws here, so both screws are going to get taken out. And then there is also a piece inside that makes that actually attaches this to the motor. Okay. Now this unit here has an indicator here, which is going to have to be taken off of this and put onto the new arm. Okay. So I guess I could probably take that off first. Now the trick is you're going to want to get it set to where it's on zero when it's on the new arm. And this thing wants you to just whirly bird all the way around here. So when you get it back on, you're just going to, going to kind of want to look at it from the top here and just make sure that that indicator is on zero when you get when you put this indicator onto the new dial. I don't know why. Okay, so I wanted to show the piece here, the indicator piece. You know, this piece here, like I said, you're going to want to get on top of it and line it up with the zero. This comes off and it goes onto the new arm. The new arm is not a two-piece like this. It's a one-piece and it screws directly through here, so the screw is going to be available through there. So I just kind of wanted to show that. And let me go ahead and get this all set up here. Okay, so basically, this is the last step here. You just got to take these screws off here. Now the new arm does have a piece that interlocks with this guard here. And you'll see that here in a second. Okay. So basically, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this piece is junk now. Maybe I'll hang it on my wall or something for posterity. Okay, this part comes off. And then the, you need to use the hex key. There's a hex head wrench in here. That's how the handle pulls off. So, it comes loose. Okay. And you can see the indicator. I'm going to take it off of here. I'm going to put it on the new one, but I won't have to show that because you're going to do that on your own. Here's the new handle, but before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and pop this piece on here so that it's on there. That's the little dust guide. And this here is going to register behind here and go into here. I just want to make sure I have a positive lock in there, more or less. And where is it? It's a little fun there. Okay. Pop this in there.
I do it by hand just so I don't cross thread anything. And I just cinch it down and there you go. The retrofit is complete. The, the last steps I'm going to be just putting the, ta the new tabletop on there, lining everything up, testing everything, making sure it works. Uh, you can see how this actually flips the guard up as you squeeze it so that you do it voluntarily and it's not doing it on its own. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I decided to show um, the table after all. Uh, you know, the rest of the saw is converted, so you got the new uh, guard on here, you got the new handle with its, you know, with its uh, capabilities, and we're going to replace the table. Now, the table actually gets replaced, the rails get replaced, and the table gets replaced. I've already removed the table, so. Uh, the instructions tell you to keep the hardware, so you got to keep this hardware. Then they give you additional hardware. They give you new uh, screw mounts to, sc to put the back part of the table on with the fence. They give you one of these. They give you another nut that's not here. And then they'll give you these side mounts, these rails. Okay. The rails will use... This is, this is the hole right here that these will fit into. Okay. So uh, obviously it's going to go this way to squeeze against the table and they're going to it's actually going to use the same holes as the old rails did so it's going to use the back hole and this hole okay so just in a similar fashion to what these rails are but there's a they're a little bit they're configured a little bit differently to change the placement of where that actual that back fence is and I've moved the saw blade forward you know the uh, the actual saw and the the blade is removed just for safety purposes, I don't really like working on things with blades in them. Uh, it's unplugged. You know, they tell you to do that in the instructions. So, okay. So basically, uh, I've already loosened these, so these guys have to come off. So you're going to remove both of these rails. You're going to retain all the hardware when you're doing this operation because you reuse the hardware on the new stuff. So, oops, this one here is. So that means all the washers and everything. Uh, oops, let me get that. Uh, okay, so both of them get removed. Just remember you're going to use the same two holes on the new piece. going in to save time in the video. So uh, the, actually the pieces are uh, symmetrical so you know these holes are all placed the same on the pieces okay and so are these holes so they both have you know a, a tag there. So basically I'm going to use this hole it's going to mount here and here okay in the old position so let's go ahead and put that set that up. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side. Um, oh, the way these, this hardware is, the nut goes on the outside and the, this bolt goes on the inside. So you want to do it the same as the way the factory, or the, the same as the way the old setup was. And obviously, oh yeah, that's the other thing too. To adjust the table height and the way the table is, these are slotted. So, in other words, what, what the final step is going to be is to get the table to where it's right, to where it's cutting truly square. So, there's a couple of adjustments. There's adjustments that enable the table, the fence to go, you know, in this direction. There's adjustments that enable the table to go in this direction. Okay, and then there's adjustments that enable the table to go in that direction. So, in other words, 
you know, three possible dimensions, three possible ways that it can be out of yaw, those are going to be adjusted in the very next steps. So I'm going to come back to this video once these are on and once those steps are being made. And well, I'll go ahead for posterity. I'll just go ahead and mount this up using the hardware. Same with this guy, and then the same will be repeated on the other side, obviously. So, uh, let me find the hole here. Oh, I'm sorry, I used the wrong hole. This hole up here in front. Okay, so then the same will be done in the other side, and then we're going to go ahead and put the table pieces in. Just the front piece, because that's the part that gets all the alignment done to it. Okay, so I've installed both of the side rails now. Uh, the next step is going to involve leveling the side rails per the instructions. You have to actually go in the order that the instructions say, because if you go one thing out of order, you're going to have to start from the, f from the first step and go back through it. So basically, what they tell you to do is to position a saw so that you can get this arbor on this side to, to do the leveling for you, basically. Okay. And the way that's done is, oops, let me take this reel off. Okay, so I've lowered the camera here because there's there's a part that you're going to need to see in this. Okay, so basically the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to to work with these rails, both of them. Okay, so they're going to go, they're going to tilt front and back. Okay, they're going to tilt up. So so basically the adjustments are going to be front back, side to side, and then the final adjustment will be the fence, which will be you know making the fence go like that. But that's the final adjustment. So I've put these screws in the middle, or these bolts in the middle of these slotted holes here so that I can move them and have a little bit of play. Uh, we're going to use the arbor to do these settings to where this is level because that's going to put it in perfect reference with this arm. Okay. So to do that, obviously I had I kept the blade off when I did the, the uh, you know when I swapped all this equipment out. So to do that. We'll take off the guard here. Okay, let's go remove it. Okay. Okay, so now that I've removed the, the blade guard in the blade, okay, while well, the blade was already removed, I'm going to go ahead and pitch this. I'm going to use the arbor to, you know, to gauge this. So uh, let me go ahead and do this here. I'm going to unlock this. And I'm going to get a good starting point, and then I'm going to I'm going to do it. So I have to pitch the machine the other way. That's why you take the blade off. Look, that's a 45. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of get a basic starting point here. Let's see. Okay. Let me just raise it a little bit. Oops. Raise it. Okay. And let me get a. Let me get a starting point for the back part. And that's because I kind of have a tight, kind of have a tight amount that I can raise and lower each one. Okay, so they're they're both in pretty good position. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the back one. You have to do this in order, like I mentioned, otherwise you have to start from the first point. So we'll go ahead and lock this in. Okay, feeler gauge. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and Raise the blade a little bit. So I can get that gauge in there. Okay, so you have to have just a little bit of resistance to moving, just like if you're using a feeler, an automotive feeler gauge. Okay. Okay, so that's that part's right. Probably gonna go ahead and tighten that back a little bit, just a little bit. 
worry about it moving up or down. Then I'm going to bring it around to the front position. But I'm going to go as far forward as I can. She's going to take me about there. Well, I'm going to go a little bit further back because there's a notch right there. Okay. So let me go ahead and bring that over the rail. And what I want to do is I want to be able to get the feel of this exactly the same as it was on the back side. This one's a little bit tighter here. I'm going to start the back side again because the front is a slightly tighter and I don't want it to be that way because I didn't have enough yaw in there so I think what I'll do is uh, I'll start from the front but I'm going to I'm going to actually reference the back first so I'm going to have to go back to step one Make sure this is okay. Okay, great. Then let me just go ahead and go back to the back. can and then bring this out and yeah that back's going to have to go up so not by much though not by much just going to tap it with my fingers Go back to the front one again, just for grins. Okay, we're perfect. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. And then once I get the other side done, I'm going to come back. I'm going to reference this side again, make sure all these points are correct, and make sure those points are correct. Then I'm going to move on to the next step, which is going to be setting up the table. Okay, so continuing on here. Uh, so I've I've gapped the back now, so you know, again I'm using a uh, I'm using my yardstick as my feeler gauge to gap this. I've gapped the back here already, so now I'm going to do the front side here, and you know sometimes it, you don't get it quite right, so you guys got to kind of I kind of tighten this this little bolt down here, and then I'm just going to. Go ahead and just tap it gently and just try to move it a little bit at a time. Try to get that gap set just right. Here we go. Using the yardstick again to gap it. Here we go. Okay, so this one here is gapped. And it feels about the same as the back one did. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the left side. And once I have all corners, four corners gapped, then I'm going to be ready to put the table in and get it square. So I'll return uh, for that. Well, I'll probably return for the final gapping on all four corners, and then I'll, I'll do the table after that. 
Oh, and one more comment about this gapping procedure here. Okay, um, sometimes you have to make a couple of runs at the gapping process. From you always start at the back. You know, you move to the front, back, front. If you get if you get something wrong and it, something goes out of whack, you have to start all over again from the very first step. So, um, so I started. You know, at the back, I went to the front. The back was not gapped right once I gapped the front, so I had to gap, regap the back. Then I've regapped the front now, so I know that this rail is level according to the way this arm is. Then I'm going to do the same on that side. Um, the one critical thing here, though, is that there might be a little bit of yaw on the table itself from side to side. So you want to try to get those screws right in the, or those bolts right in the middle. Of their slots here so that you have room on the other side to deal with that in case there's a little bit of yaw um, now another thing I discovered too is that the table that goes on this um, for some reason these mounting holes here do not match up to the table so I'm going to end up having to drill another hole into this rail to accommodate that table I don't know why they got it wrong um, you know, I, I went through their instructions a couple of times and it appears that, that something is just not matching up. Maybe the table doesn't match to this style of rail or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and drill another hole in there just so that I get it right. The other holes match up. So anyway, I'll, be, I'll return to that. So thanks. All right, so now I've got the, uh, I've got the rails in place. I've checked everything. I'm going to double check now. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to check all four corners to make sure that we're good to go here. So just spin it around. And again, I'm using the the uh, yardstick as my feeler gauge. I go as far forward on these rails as I can just so that I can get um, you know the, the furthest point forward so I know that that thing is absolutely level without getting into the holes that is okay and the final one Okay, so we're good to go. Got equal tension on all sides. The the, uh, the feeler gauge that I used feels the same going through all of those. So now I'm ready to go ahead and put on the table and then make sure that that's square uh, in this direction. So this is square in that direction. The other one's going to be square in this direction. And that direction is going to be, you know, square to the blade. I've got these I've got these gap to the arbor which is the same as the shaft going to the blade now I'm going to put the blade on there and then I'm going to check the back according to the way the blade is whether that's square against the fence and that'll be my next step so I'll revisit you once I have that in place all right so now it's time to go ahead and put the table on okay the table does come very far forward because this is a kit that prevents the uh, the guard that goes over this blade from it has to be down in the back so it, they've what they've done in the redesign here is they've moved the table a lot forward which you know um, it gives you less it, it gives you less actual swing on the saw so if you're doing this you might you know modify it to put it back into place uh, craftsman's not, not going to say that, but I'm going to say that. Just make sure that you're safe in your final outcome. 
I don't see anybody's fingers being back here to where you know that saw blade is going to be an issue if that blade is not all the way down. But you never know, and that's why Craftsman did it. They did it to protect themselves. Now the table um, it goes into place. You know, you've got all these little holes here. This this is kind of a universal fit table, so it's got multiple holes in it instead of having the right holes where they should be. Um, you use the old hardware off the old um, off the old setup to remount this table. So you're going to use these screws. This is a flathead screw that's actually going to go. Let me make sure I've got that there. That's a flathead screw that's actually going to go inside of one of these countersunk holes here. The holes are flat on the bottom of them. So, you know, this, this uh, washer is going to press against it. You've got a, a slotted screw here, so you're going to be able to turn it to get uh, torque on it. And then this, um, this nut and this washer right here, the second one back here, that's actually going to go underneath the table. So it's going to be pressing up against, you know, this sheet metal right here. So that's the way it's going to be tightened in place. The first step that they tell you to do is to knock in this. Um, this is actually going to get knocked into the press board. I don't want to knock it in right now because I'm just mocking this up. Uh, I don't. I want the table to remain virgin. So this actually gets knocked in to the on this one here on this saw. It gets knocked into the second hole underneath, so that there's a screw here, and then there's a then there is a there's another screw here that's just a it's just a shake. It doesn't have a head on it, so I don't have it here, but. Uh, it's a shake that's going to screw down into there and what that's going to do is it's going to now allow me to level the front of the table you know like that so I've already got these arms leveled here and the table does actually sit on those arms level so I'm not going to have a need to do that with this setup here so I'm going to skip that part but you know I'm just showing you that that's part of the deal Okay, the other thing about this is, is that the table has its table pieces, but then there's a piece that pushes up against the back of the table. This is, this is more or less press board, so you really don't want to press uh, these against the press board. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up cutting a 2x4, you know, or maybe a couple of 2x4s to fit in the very back there so that they can wedge the table in. And this is going to be what... Oops, this is going to be what these wedge against so that I don't have to worry about flaking this stuff off because this flakes very easily. Okay, so that's going to be the final part of the table. The saw blade is in place without the guard right now. Obviously, I have everything unplugged because I don't want to accidentally start the saw. So, you know, you do that for safety reasons. It also says that in the manual. So, these guys are going to go right back here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in place now. And you know the last step here we actually got everything levels and it is level it sits on here flat so I don't have to worry about the adjustment screw in the middle now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these screws in and uh, I don't have all of the hardware for this so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the two corner ones in to show you as an example and how it's done and I'm just going to go ahead and run you know the little the little washer and a nut underneath here and it should be so well th that should be it is level because I checked it and checked it so everything's level the one thing it's not is square to the blade okay so there is a little bit of yaw on this table the way it's set up here so that's the reason that you have to go through the next steps you want to get the table to where the back edge of the table you know the, uh, the guard which is right here, you want to get that square to the blade, and that's the whole purpose of this of this part of the exercise. Okay, so now, as I said, I, I, I'm going to end up putting this two by four back here. Uh, I'm going to cut another one, put it back there. I'm going to probably just get one long one and put it back there, so I have one board that stretches across there. But for now, you know, I've got these little pieces here. Uh, this is going to go right up here. Okay, this guy's going to go right up here. I'm actually not going to tighten the table in the back because I've got to make sure that I've got the table right this way. And I'm going to verify that the table is correct from front to back by drawing the saw blade across it, 
making sure that only a portion of the saw blade is touching the table. I just wanted to show how the table was going to be when it's complete. I'm not actually going to rip through this here because, I, as I said, I want the table to remain virgin. So I'm going to pull these guys out. This and this, okay? And I'm going to focus on the front part of the table because that's where all the cutting is going to be done. And I'm going to make sure that the back of the table is square to that saw blade. Okay, so the way that I do that is I end up having to use a square. So I'm going to pull out my square here. Okay, I'm going to draw the saw blade up a little bit. Let's go ahead and draw it up. And then I'm going to, I'm going to drop that saw blade down some. And now, one of the things about it is, these are carbide tipped saw blades. So, I'm going to probably use, I'm going to probably use two tips. This, this is a ripping blade. I'm going to probably use two tips to verify. And I'm going to mark these tips that I've used these tips because maybe some of them are jutting out further than others. I'm going to mark the two tips that I use. I'm going to notate them so that I know that they're correct. Uh, you want to use the same two ones because if you spin the blade or whatever at any point, you might have two, two of these uh, pieces of carbide that are just offset a little bit more than the other ones are. So you want to make sure you got that right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lower it a little bit more. And I'm going to get actually two, two of those blade tips onto the table or near it. I don't really want them to touch the table. Okay, we're, we're good. Very close to the table. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... So now as you can see, uh, well you can't really see it from that angle, but from this angle you surely can. As you can see, once I get the saw blade up here, okay, and I get this square, it's not square. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull the table square on that edge. So let me go ahead and do that and probably push it back on the other edge. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get it. Okay, now it appears that the table is square. Uh, yeah, the table is square. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to check it from the other side as well to make sure. And nope, it does not appear to be square from this edge. So I'm going to make an adjustment here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this side back a little bit. Now, you can, you know what? It's a good idea to make sure that you're using a new saw blade too, because there's a possibility that if you're using a used saw blade, there might be a bend in the saw blade. The saw blade might be distorted a little bit. So, you know, just make sure that when you do this, you're using a brand new saw blade to make absolutely sure that you're getting a square deal. And I, I think that that's what's going on here. I'm having a, I'm having an issue because of, nope, nope, but it's, okay, it does appear to be square. Okay, so the teeth are, it's square to the teeth, it's square to the edge of the, uh, of the table on that side. Um, I'll do the outside of this one here. And it's slightly off there. So I'm going to keep working at it until it's square. And basically, that's how you get this table square to the blade. And you also want to make sure that once it is square, that you drag this blade across here. And if it's barely touching, it should barely touch all the way across the surface. I don't know if we can see the whole surface here. Yeah, okay. It should barely, this blade should barely touch across the surface. If it gouges anywhere deeper under this surface, that means that that blade is not square this way. So by getting this table square, you know that the fence is going to be square and everything is going to be square in a saw. We know that these 
that these arms back here are square and you know we're good to go so the last step is going to be putting the guard on and then actually cutting a piece of wood and making sure it's square but for all intents and purposes we're done with the installation of the table uh, I still got to work on this a little bit to get it square but you kind of get the idea how it goes and once it is square you know you're going to go in there you're going to screw these in here so that they're nice and tight and you're tightened you're done um, some of these tables you know they're on legs and it's probably a good idea to pull them by the frame instead of by the table that way you're not going to have to worry about getting the table out of adjustment so you know just be aware of, of how you're manipulating these saws because over time you know there's a possibility that they could get out of square so thanks for watching the video and uh, enjoy yes I did want to make a comment on this table here okay so it appears that I was able to get it square front to back because the rails were square okay uh, according to how I did the measurement with the arbor however I cannot get this table to be square to the saw blade you know the back um, plane here this edge to be square to the saw blade it's slightly off even when I pull it at its maximum point so there's a possibility that the frame might have been bent at some point during this saw's career which would mean that I would have to straighten out the the frame or I could slot the holes and you know just go ahead and put them to where I've got enough room to move it to where I can get that table square you can kind of see here um, that this that this um, square does not go against these blades correctly and I've pulled it as far over as I can so that's how I know that it's it's not square and the other thing too is that uh, I'm using a ripping blade so there's not a lot of teeth on this thing so what I'm doing is I'm using I'm putting this edge up against parts where there are no blade teeth and I've raised the blade up a little bit I didn't want to cut the table but you kind of get the idea here um, so you know that's kind of what I've got right now I don't know if you can see the gap in there uh, let's see yeah, there's there's a little bit of a gap the gaps back here this is where it's actually touching so I'm gonna have to go ahead and modify uh, the rail you know I don't recommend that you do that I recommend uh, you know well craftsman's not gonna recommend that you do that either uh, I would recommend getting the the table frame straight so you could either do the table frame straight or put notches in there um, you know the notches is my idea that craftsman you really want to make sure that this frame right here is straight so if you have to go through the trouble to make sure that that's squared up then go through the trouble to do that you know bend it back into place uh, I'm not exactly sure how that got out of square but it did so anyway everything else is going to go together when it's finished it's going to end up uh, it's going to end up with the with the rip fence in place this back plane of the table in place and a couple of pieces of wood up against these because these screw up you know these will screw up and tighten up the back part of the table so that will uh, conclude the video and uh, you know I ran into some unique problems here uh, you know chances are more than likely if your saw hasn't been moved around like this one has that you're not going to get a saw that the that the actual frame is not true to square so it's probably good that it happened because there might be a few guys out there that have a saw that's unsquare and yeah, that's going to help them but uh, you know for the rest of you guys that that frame should be square and once you get those legs square you know the additional brand new legs um, you know you know that you're going to be square to go so thanks for watching the video yes uh, just one other final footnote here I did want to check the frame to verify that it was the frame that was unsquare I mean it couldn't have been anything else but so you know I just take my trusty square here um, you know these teeth they jut out because they're they're carbon um, you know this is a carbon tip um, saw blade here it's got carbide blade or blade tips on it so I'm gonna try to avoid hitting any of those and just get it up square against the actual surface of the blade and as you can see the front gap here is actually uh, bigger than the back gap here so that's how I absolutely know 
that this frame is out of square. So again, you know, you can bend, try to bend the frame to where it's square or close to square and then get it that way, or you can notch holes in it, depending on, you know, what's going to be your, your best solution. For me, you know, I don't know if I want to deal with trying to get the frame square, so I might end up going notching the holes to get that right, and then I'll have enough yaw in there to go ahead and pull that table straight. I know that these are straight, so I'm going to keep these straight. And I'm going to probably just end up notching the holes that are, that are in there. So just FYI, that's kind of what happens when you're dealing with an older saw here and you weren't the original owner. You're not sure what happened to it. And apparently this might have been dropped on one corner. So thanks for watching.